Okay, so if you've read this title, I bet most of you thought Scary Bloody Rabbit Movie. Now, before you go thinking I'll be talking about how scary this movie was and how freaky it was, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I never thought this movie was scary. I mean, it's not like it's about a mermaid who gives up her identity and gets her tongue cut out for a price, fails, and commits suicide. So, for those of you who... So, for those of you who are watching this and are not comfortable with topics and themes like these clips... Run this block with dead bodies. I think he's gone. We got you out, Bigwig. Both his ears were ripped to shreds. <laughs> then this is not the series for you to watch. I still encourage everyone to give this movie a chance, but I do at least want to warn people that these themes and these clips may come up. But if you want to stick through it though, then let me tell you about a tale. A tale done by a massive storyteller named Richard Adams called Watership Down. And why by the end of this, you will see the masterful storytelling at work and why it's not as scary as you think. Hello everyone, and welcome to Wolf Tales, where literature runs wild. So, little history on this video before we get started. This is my ninth attempt at making a Watership Down video. That's right, ninth. The other eight tries were getting skewered by copyright and me being an idiot for not realizing how to get around it. It was supposed to come out on the anniversary of his death, may he rest in peace, on December 24th, but it failed. So I took some time, took a breath, and decided to release it in November. Why am I telling you all of this? Because I want to make it clear how much I love this story and wanted to look at it. Richard Adams has impacted my life more times than I can count. He inspired me to study literature, his work inspired me to write my own stories, and his world building pushed me to do better. While I haven't found a copy of Shardick to read yet, Plague Dogs and Warship Downs were books I treasured as a pup and still do today. It saddens me that he died a few years ago, but want to know what saddens me more? Is how people only remember him as the creepy and dark animal writer. So often, I've seen this movie as children's top 10 scariest animated watch list that they say it's nightmare fuel inducing and that it scarred them for life. And worst of all, when people hear these reactions, most of them believe it and miss out on a wonderful story. Even when the Netflix adaptation came out, they tried to ramp up the dark and violent aspects and make it a romance instead of a brotherly connection. See, the story focuses on an older brother named Hazel and a younger one named Fiverr as they live in a place called Sanderford Warren. Fiverr soon has dreams and visions that alert Hazel that a bad danger is coming to their home. Hazel believes his brother and takes him and a few other males out into the big world. After facing many challenges, they're able to eventually reach the hill of Watership Down and then must protect it. While facing challenges of neighboring Warrens, a lack of female, and enemies at every turn, the brothers never get a break. Hazel and Fiverr, as well as their friends, must learn to use the gift that Frith gave them, or die by the claws and fangs of the Allele, the Thousand Enemies. I could go on for ages about this book, but today I'm going to try to explain not only why it captivates, but terrifies its readers through the book's POV and perspective. Now, for those who think perspective and POV are the same thing, don't feel bad. I thought the same for a while too, and I went to school for this. While both of them look at the characters' viewpoints of the world, they're distinctive because of certain aspects. Point of view focuses on the type of narrator who is telling the story. Perspective, on the other hand, is how the narrator is perceiving the events. An example of this would be if we had a story set in war. If the viewpoint is first person, that means we're getting one character's point of view who is directly telling us the story. If the character themselves is a pacifist, then their perspective would be that they hate the war that's going on, while a soldier may see it as a fight for freedom. Perspectives can affect the judgments as well the interactions have between other characters and sometimes what can lead to clashes. We as the reader can also have our minds changed about a character based on our own perspectives and may love or hate a character based on them. 
As for a literary example, we can put this idea into practice with a common fairy tale like Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood is told by a narrator, so our point of view is third person. The narrator knows everything about the story, characters, and events that are taking place no matter where we are in the story. In addition, we as readers can piece together events that will happen because of our own knowledge of the world and what we learn in the POV. Lil Red Riding Hood is a young girl who lives a sheltered life. So her perspective of a giant furry carnivore coming out of the woods would paint him as being the big bad wolf. This is Lil Red Riding Hood's perspective on the story and the events taking place. However, if the story focused on the big bad wolf, he may see Lil Red as the villain blocking him from just getting food. Without POV and perspective, we couldn't have any stories at all. However, most stories are told by the perspective and POV of humans. We believe that the narrator talking to us is a human or a being of that same intelligence. Because of this, there is a layer of safety when we enter the story because we are in the mindset of another human or human intelligence being told to us. But Watership Down doesn't put us in the seat of a human, it puts us in that of a rabbit. In the book Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, the story focuses on a boy who has godly powers. Though he's in danger, he has been shown to get out of these situations on his own and able to adapt to events in the book easily. In the Hunger Games trilogy, Katniss is who we focus on, who we see as an incredible survivalist and warrior. Most stories have these kinds of connections which make us feel safe and comfortable. We know we're looking at this story from the perspective of a person well adapted to survive in it and has the power to protect themselves. There's no issue or feeling that we can't survive if we were put in a similar situation. We know by the end, they'll be fine because fantastical reasons or deus ex machina. But in Watership Down's case, it rips the safety blanket from you, toppling your position of apex predator to low-ranking prey. Watership Down sets you up for the perspective of a normal eastern cottontail rabbit. They have no fantastical skills or ferocity like in Monty Python. They're just a rabbit. A creature easily killed and hunted by thousands of animals in the world, including ourselves. The story never makes you lose that sense of constant danger and fear, realizing how dangerous the world can be for a rabbit. As humans, we're used to being untouchable, except by either natural disasters, certain animals, or other humans. Well, also our stupidity if we want to count the imbeciles that enter into the Darwin Awards every year, but never mind that. In this POV and perspective of the story, our perception of everyday life is turned on its head and challenged. Our little pussycat that's our companion is a monstrous assassin. Our lovable and loyal Fido is a dangerous, destructive, unstoppable force of nature. Even something as simple as a babbling brook is seen as a colossal death trap. This anxiety and fear, of course, gets worse when paired with the POV and our own human perspective. In the beginning of the novel, Hazel and Fiverr are unable to read a sign. A sign which says the area will be developed for houses. The rabbits are not able to process it, but the POV of the story wants us to know it by showing us the sign and what it says. We as humans know the land will be made into houses. With the horror of what's coming, we have to sit and watch it. This is amplified by the fact we know the fates of all the rabbits that end up being left behind in the warren by Captain Holly later in the book. Another of these scenes happen in Cowslip's Warrens where all of his rabbits seem to act more human-like than rabbit. The perspective we are given from Hazel and Fiverr makes it seem like this perfect warren has a truly dark secret about it. And they're right. This is a rabbit farm where some of them get caught every now and then for fur and food. However, we must sit and watch helplessly as yet again more rabbits we hope get out of this situation. But soon we find out that one of the rabbits we've grown attached to has been caught in a snare and we are powerless to do anything. This sense of dread and fear puts us at a better understanding of the characters in the book and their journey. We share this helplessness and fear, yet it is amplified by us knowing that our actions unknowingly have caused a large part of their grief. This theme of animal cruelty was prevalent in a lot of books that Richard Adams made. He was a firm believer in animal rights. 
In plague dogs, it was questioning the need for animal testing, and in Watership Down, it's showing our effect on the natural world. It's humans who made cars that almost hit them. It's humans that took their land and slaughtered hundreds of them. And it's humans that sometimes shoot them just because it's fun. While we see the rabbits think this is just life or strange beings from Frith, we are left with the weight of our species' actions. With that said, however, Adams does try and show that even through the fear the rabbits face, they keep pushing forward. Sure, they're frightened and scared all the time, but they never give up on their goal of finding a peaceful home, and through that courage face many obstacles that come their way. They were brave enough to leave their home and find safety. They were humbled by what Cowslip did and moved on as a better team. They were clever enough to trick Woundward and get does for the warrant. In the end, their bravery shone through yet again as they used their skills to get the dog to the hill. Heck, they even were able to show that some humans are good and show that our actions can actually help the rabbits and affect the natural world in a better light. All of this gives the audience hope for the rabbits through their journey and genuinely happy for them when they succeed. Even as more things keep happening, the reader focuses less on the horrible side of the world and more how our rabbit friends are doing. How they fight through adversity and come out winning stronger and stronger each time. And to be honest, this and another part affects our enjoyment and fear of the world by how real the world feels. These rabbits have a culture, a language, a social structure, a set of legends they go by, how their world works, and it's consistent. It never drops. The storytelling is engaging, the world is thrilling, and it makes you believe it can exist right out in your backyard. Richard Adams spent a long time studying rabbits and tried to make a society based on real rabbits. He never made the rabbits do things a rabbit wouldn't do or couldn't do, and in the series, it helps us connect to them. He put his heart and soul into this work, and it shows, primarily because of who the book was originally made for. See, little known fact people bring up. This book was made for his two daughters. He wanted to tell a story to them that would make them laugh and smile, but also teach them things about real life. He did take criticisms from them to make the book better, such as including a character named Bluebell to make it a little fun and happy. It is through this dedication and this work that it makes it so enjoyable for everyone to read. Admittedly, some themes and characters have to be updated as the generations go by, looking specifically as the females, but the world is still incredible. We are connected and feel with these rabbits every step of their journey. And that, my dear watchers, is the mastery of Watership Down's storytelling. It doesn't need to rely on big fights, earth-shattering mythical creatures, or grand, unbelievable tales that can never happen. It just tells you a tale about survival. A tale about brothers trying to find a place where they belong in a world of danger and fear. To find the beauty in the world that's harsh and unforgiving. Something I think a lot of readers, especially in today's times, could use to help them through all of this. It may not be for everyone's taste, and I understand that. But I believe that anyone who wants to be a storyteller, like a DM, a writer, a screenwriter, or anyone else, should give Watership Down a chance. Now if that got you interested, then here are some options for you to check out the story. If you think that I'm going to say go straight on to the novel, then you are 100% correct. You get a cookie. I'm going to be honest, the book is the best way to go, but I understand that some people may not want to read books. Hey, that's okay. Whatever is your fancy. You have three options to pick, the miniseries, TV show, and the movie. And while that may be overwhelming, here's a quick idea of figuring out which you may like better. If you are absolutely terrified of this series and the blood and the gore and everything else and think it's dark as ever and you want to ease into it, then go with the TV show. It's light, it's fun, it still has some deaths, but it's not as gory as the movie, Netflix, or book. I would definitely suggest this for anyone under the age of 13 to get you used to the series before moving on when you're older. If you want a little bit more dark, but not as dark as the movie, then I would definitely suggest go with the Netflix adaptation. You'll get your dark aspect, there's a lot changed in it, but they do bring back some fun characters like Bluebell. 
And if you want the most accurate cinema depiction of the book, then please go with the movie. I know many people may be afraid of it, but it really is a great adaptation and a wonderful movie to watch. Overall, no matter which choice you pick, Watership Down is a story to see for the ages. Here's hoping many of you will take a look at any of these versions and lose yourself in the mastery of Richard Adams' writing, like I did as a pup all those seasons ago. And that's our video! I hope you all liked the analysis of the work. To be honest, I had to stop myself from writing 10 pages about how amazing this book is. If this is something that's interests you and you want to see more videos like this, please comment below and remember to like and subscribe. Again, it lets me know what you like and what you don't like and where to go from here as a channel. For now, I gotta get ready for the next review on the list, one I've been waiting three years to look at. A movie that has captured the hearts of all who have seen it and let's just say might be a little biased with my love for it. Till next time, this is Silver Starling. See you next time you want to run with the pack, which is actually a hint for the next video.